Hello, everyone, and welcome to the WaterSense AWE Outdoor Water Efficiency Webinar Series. We are very pleased to invite you to join us for our regular quarterly webinar. We'll be focused on uh, issues pertaining to outdoor water efficiency. Um, and what we want to do is just before we um, start the webinar, we want to um, go through a few housekeeping details. So first of all, um, your phone lines or audio, computer audio will be muted um, because we want to minimize background noise. We're recording the webinar so that you can watch it later if you wish as well. Uh, so you will be muted and not able to ask questions directly, but you can type in your questions into the chat box that's part of the GoToWebinar uh, dialog box. So if you look in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, you'll see an orange rectangle with a white arrow. If you open it up, it'll open up the dialog box where you can type your questions into chat. Um, and we will have dedicated time for questions and answers throughout the webinar, as well as some open discussions at the end of the, the presentation. Um, as I mentioned, since we're recording the webinar, we will make a recording of this presentation available on the WaterSense website and also on the Alliance for Water Efficiency's YouTube channel. So if you miss any part of this webinar, you can always go and see it there. So at this point, I think we'd like to ask you a couple of questions, um, polling questions. Um, so first of all, uh, who do we have on the call today? So Liam is going to pull up uh, the poll. So can you, um, are, is everyone seeing the, the poll questions? Are you representing local or state government? Are you an irrigation professional? Are you a water utility, a university or university extension service, or other? So is the poll, Julius, do you see the poll coming through? The results should be up there now. Jim, you go ahead and read the results. All right, I just shared the results. Do you all see that? No, I don't see it on my screen. Okay, it looks like we have about 40% uh, from water utilities, 38% from local and state government, and then about 10% irrigation professionals and 10% other. And I believe there was another poll as well. We're looking for what part of the country you're calling from. Give you all a couple seconds to answer that. Your choices are west, southwest, midwest, southeast, and northeast. All right, looks like most of you are calling in from the west, 47%, and then 30% from the southwest, 14% from the southeast, 6% from the midwest, and 3% from the northeast. All right, and I guess back okay. to the Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. I think we'll move forward. What we want to just do is tell you a little bit about this webinar series. For those of you who are old hands at this, this is not going to be new news. But what we do at this series every quarter is present outdoor topics that are useful for water utility and irrigation professionals. Um, some of the more recent webinars that we've had include uh, a webinar on landscape transformation uh, case studies, uh, efficient irrigation practices for mediums and park strips, 
and demonstrating the nexus between water efficiency and stormwater. We've had lots of different partners. You see some logos for uh, of partners in the past on the screen. And as I mentioned before, we do record the webinars and post them. So recordings of past webinars and also registration for future webinars uh, can be done at the EPA WaterSense webinars uh, website. So let's go ahead and start. Uh, we're really pleased to present this webinar today to you, uh, Your Better Yard. Um, and nothing could be more appropriate during this time of COVID-19 sheltering than to talk about what people can do to enhance the environment in their backyard. And we're very pleased to welcome our partners, uh, Drew Atwater and John Lansden from Walton Miguel Water District, Kevin Buck from Brainmaster, Chris Klein and Sarah Heitzman from Braccio, uh, myself from the Alliance for Water Efficiency, and Julius Duncan from the EPA WaterSense program. So um, thanks to our partners for participating with us today. But I'm going to just for a second before I turn it over to them, just talk to you a little bit about uh, a recent program that we've launched at the Alliance for Water Efficiency called the Learning Landscapes Grant Program. And this is a program made possible by a grant from Scott's Miracle Grow Foundation. It's our first foray into grant making ourselves. Usually we apply for grants, we don't usually issue them, but this is the first time we'll be doing that. And these small grants that we'll be issuing will be used to build or improve new existing or new outdoor educational spaces um, connected to schools and, and that serve grades three to eight. Um, we envision these grants going to school gardens, educational landscapes on uh, public property, government property, botanical gardens, and any other community locations that would be appropriate to teach kids the principles of sustainable landscaping. And what we've done in order to do that is we've created a, a, a landscape curriculum, which I'll talk about in a minute, but we are asking the projects that are applying for these grants to include elements of efficient water management that are demonstrated in the uh, curriculum. And so examples of that kind of official water management are you know, climate appropriate plants and landscape material, uh, interpretive signage that can teach the kids uh, not only about the plants themselves, but how much water they need and how water efficient they might be, uh, rainwater harvesting, um, and a lot more uh, in the way of sustainability and, and landscaping. And the, we wanted to make the grants intentionally flexible to allow for creative and region specific projects. Um, the funded projects have incorporate at least one of the learning landscape lessons uh, that we've prepared uh, in this education program in order to qualify for the grant. So what are these learning landscape lessons? It's a curriculum that we had uh, an educational specialist and a teacher in, in Atlanta Public Schools write for us, Ken Mervis and Greg Beach. And there are three different lessons that we, you can either use separately or together. Um, our water, where the water comes from, planting for our climate, and our great outdoors are the names of those three curriculum units. And they are aligned with next generation science standards, so the teachers can easily adapt them for use in the classroom. And we, we do ask that the grant applicants uh, use the learning landscapes. So we plan to issue eight $5,000 grants. Uh, applications are going to be reviewed by uh, the AWE team and a, commu a committee of third-party reviewers. Unfortunately, the grant applications are due today, <laughs> um, so it's probably not much time for those of you out there to apply for it, but there is potential might give a week's extension, so check with us tomorrow. Um, but despite the grant program closing today, the Learning Landscapes lessons will be available free for free download on the AWE website going forward. So. We urge you to go take a look at uh, the landscape guide requested from us, um, and we'll be happy to send it to you. So at this point, I'd like to turn it over to Julius to talk about the webinar. Thanks, Marianne. Hi, everyone. I'm Julius Duncan from the EPA WaterSense program. Today's featured speakers will provide tips on designing and keeping a healthy landscape. Before our featured speakers present, I'd like to share a few of the resources we have available on the WaterSense website. When designing your landscape, select plants that are native or low water use. You will also need to adjust your irrigation schedule as the seasons change. In our presentation today, you'll hear from speakers that show how the whole landscape and irrigation system can work together. 
Next slide. A well-designed landscape will minimize the need for supplemental water. The principal components of a water-efficient landscape are healthy soils with appropriate grading, mulching, regionally appropriate plant choices, appropriately sized turf areas, hydrozones. Your soil is the foundation of the landscape. Healthy soils help develop deep plant root systems and allow water to properly infiltrate. Be sure to maintain good topsoil that captures rain as it falls and releases water back to plants over time. If you use drought tolerant and climate appropriate plants, you may not need to apply as much supplemental irrigation. Several different types of plants can be used to create a functional and attractive landscape. Plants should be grouped according to their water needs in order to promote efficient irrigation. States or municipalities often maintain plant lists of native and climate appropriate plants. So check your local Department of Natural Resources webpage. Smaller turf areas can reduce resources and costs associated with watering, mowing, and fertilizing. If you have a graded area, consider replacing some of the turf area with a rain garden to capture stormwater runoff. Next slide. A broken sprinkler in your system can waste a thousand gallons of water per week, but fixing any issues in your irrigation system can save you hundreds of dollars and thousands of gallons of water throughout the irrigation season. For irrigation professionals, it's often a challenge to quickly address leaks or broken sprinklers between visits, since these things may largely go unnoticed by homeowners. We've developed a checklist that can be used as a good reminder to homeowners to regularly check for issues in their landscape. And if they find an issue, they can flag it so that their irrigation professional can quickly identify and fix it. With Smart Irrigation Month coming up in July, starting tomorrow, it's a good time to take a look at our new mini reports for weather-based irrigation controllers and spray sprinkler bodies. We have updated these guides to reflect the number and range of products on the market and other technical information irrigation professionals can find helpful. And our latest case study features the city of Oklahoma City and how they reduce irrigation on medians and park strips by using efficient sprinklers. Next, we'll hear from our featured speakers. And just a brief introduction on each of our speakers today. First from, we have uh, Drew Atwater. He's the Director of Finance and Water Resources at Molten Miguel Water District overseeing the finance, water efficiency, and water resource planning departments. Drew has overseen the integration of district analytical talent across disciplines to create an interdisciplinary data science and quantitative team to improve efficiencies throughout the agency. Before coming to the district, Mr. Atwater worked as a rate consultant for more than a dozen agencies, building long-range financial plans, water budget rate studies, and drought rates. Next, John Land Lanson, has been with Molten Niguel Water District for five years. During his time in the water industry, John has gained extensive knowledge regarding irrigation watering needs to help improve customer water efficiency and support the development of industry-leading programs to find innovative ways to help the district's customers be more efficient. He oversees MNWD's school device retrofit program that involves performing site assessments at schools within the district service area to help schools find the best opportunities to save water indoors and outdoors. Kevin Buck is the CEO of Rainmaster Lawn Systems and has over 25 years of experience in the green industry. His experience ranges from field work as a technician to overseeing marketing, sales, vendor relations, and business development. Improving customer service and constantly evolving the business are his passion. Kevin has a BS in marketing and business education from the University of Wisconsin. Chris Klein is a co-founder and the CEO of Rachio, where he leads the business and guides product development. With Rachio, he's focused on creating solutions that form a sustainable relationship between people and water. He has experience leading product development teams. Products include commercial construction building, B2B and B2C software, consumer hardware, and consumer products. Sarah Heitzman has been at Rachio for over a year and a half and has over eight years of experience working with utilities. Before Rachio, Sarah served as a principal in Bain and Company's Los Angeles office. Sarah advised clients across a range of industries, including consumer products, utilities, entertainment, IT resale, and nonprofits. Sarah has extensive expertise in growth strategy, digital strategy, and operations and operating model design. 
having assessed topics such as national and international expansion, product line expansion and enhancements, and customer engagement via Salesforce optimization and digital and social marketing. So thanks to all our guest speakers today, and now I'll hand it over to them. Well, thanks for the introduction, Julius. This is uh, Drew Atwater from Moltlingo Water District. I uh, just wanted to provide some background on the district and um, our, where we get our, our water. It's been a key motivation for our interest in water efficiency and developing programs. Uh, we're, we're a retail water utility uh, providing uh, water, wastewater, and recycled water service in South Orange County in California. And 100% of our potable water comes from uh, imported water, either from the Western Sierra Nevada uh, range, from the State Water Project, uh, which is the green line on the chart, um, or the Colorado River aqueducts um, from the Colorado wa uh, watershed. Um, and so uh, water travels hundreds of miles to, to get to the districts and is a relative, relatively um, high, high price um, because of uh, because of uh, that compared to much of the country. Um, we serve about 170,000 uh, people and uh, are governed by a seven member publicly elected uh, board of directors, which are um, shown on the slide. Um, we serve uh, um, par parts or all of six cities in South Orange County. Um, and because of our interest in efficiency and uh, driven by our, our board's interest in um, cost optimization and looking at ways to be uh, the best serve our customers and uh, use resources efficiently. We've really prided ourselves on being an innovative data-driven utility and it's uh, been shown through a number of awards that we've won over the last uh, last last few years. Um, we're actually uniquely one of the, uh, we have won the top workplace in Orange County which um, it's, it's probably not the most common uh, for a water utility so we pride ourselves on our uh, really collaborative workforce uh, but have also won awards across innovation, environmental stewardship, customer service, and um, in the last uh, year, we've also been um, upgraded to AAA from both Fitch and Standard and Poor, so provides uh, cost efficiencies uh, for the for serving our customers and investing in infrastructure. Uh, next slide. So as we look to, to making sure that we provide reliable water for customers for the foreseeable future, uh, we found that the, the cheapest drop um, is the one that's not used. Um, and so we've been uh, going through a journey over the last, uh, especially eight years, looking at how to, be, uh, how to, how to, how to provide uh, programs and opportunities to help customers be efficient. Um, and so we, we've highlighted the fact that it saves, saves water, but also saves money for customers. Um, and also different different customers resonate with different messages. And so, um, so we've also uh, highlighted the benefits to reducing urban runoff. Um, we're relatively close to the ocean. And so customers resonate with going to the beach and making sure that um, the, the there's good ocean water quality. And so it's a message that's re really resonated. Um, but it also has helped avoid uh, higher, potentially higher rate, rate increases by avoiding um, upsides in infrastructure and, and investing in more storage, uh, because um, as uh, we've actually, uh, we've seen dramatic reductions in overall water use in the last 10 years with investments in water efficiency programs, with a rate structure that drives customers to efficiency. And so overall, that's, that's maintained the lowest average uh, bill for customers amongst all of our uh, neighboring agencies in South Orange County. Looking back at the history, so we've 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 um, in, in the past we participated through uh, Metropolitan Water District runs uh, rebate programs for all of Southern California, um, and so we 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 added some money towards those programs um, as a supplementary and additional incentive, and uh, we're highly successful removing uh, about a quarter of all of the turf removed in all of Orange County, with about five percent of the population, and that totaled about five million square feet of turf. So one of the highest participation rates in turf removal. Uh, but we saw that we needed to, to look at ways that we could um, incentivize efficiency um, in, a, in a more targeted kind of way. Um, and and look, so we did a big study in partnership with the um, University of California at Riverside that looked at um, participation motivations. It looked at the water savings across programs. It also um, looked at um, how, how do we uh, motivate customers and the key recommendation from all of this analysis was 
uh, we really need to make it easy and 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 kind of what they the analogy that we had was we need the we need to have the the toilets uh, of the 1990s and the 20 2010s and look at uh, how to make water efficiency easy. Everyone remembers the toilets were the easy program in the 1990s. Everyone uh, focused on out, indoor efficiency. Um, outdoors is where the largest opportunity for our service area was, and so um, we wanted to find ways to make it easy and the way that uh, made the most uh, sense uh, in, in surveys of customers and getting feedback was through a direct uh, install type program where there's a direct discount at the point of sale as opposed to a rebate uh, maybe two or a couple months after the fact. So breaking that mold of having a rebate program um, towards more of a direct install program. And so I'm going to turn it over to John Lansden to talk about some uh, specific programs that we've developed um, to help our customers. Okay, thank you, Drew, and hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to be speaking with you all about some of our programs that we're running right now. And up first on the screen is our Smart Timer Direct Install Program. Now, we started this in 2016 and are currently on our second generation of the program. And we consider this basically the biggest bang for the buck regarding water savings. We uh, kind of like Drew said, we look at this as the new toilets as far as our rebate devices go. Um, this program, it has evolved over, over the years through customer feedback and lessons that we've learned through the process. Uh, mainly, we found that having the controllers professionally installed realized the largest water savings and it increased the customer satisfaction through the process. And it's, uh, it's very easy for the customers since they are all now professionally installed. And during the installation, the customer also gets a chance to ask, ask questions and learn how to use the controller from the installer while they're there. So uh, that, that's really been a great thing that the customers have liked. Um, we also offer a direct hotline phone number and email specifically just for Moulton Adele customers. In case they need any troubleshooting help in the future, they can just call Rachio or send them a quick email and they'll get a really quick response. Um, it's, it's just been great working with Rachio over the years on this and they help us in any way that they, they can. Um, and that's about it for this slide. Next slide, please. Okay, moving on to our next program. This is called Naturescape. Um, we've teamed up with local businesses to create this program, which is our own take on the traditional turf removal programs. But we focus solely on transforming old lawns to beautiful California native gardens. Again, this program is designed to make the process as easy as possible for the customers. As you can see, uh, there's a seven step process included on this slide. It's also a cost share pay as you go process with the rebate amount subtracted out of the invoice total. So you don't have to have the long waits for the rebate check. Uh, the customer, they must first attend our landscape workshop, which we've been hosting for years about once or twice a month. And that focuses on how to maintain a California friendly or a California native garden. Then the customer is free to sign up uh, for the Naturescape program. And basically how it works is we come out and do a pre-inspection. Our contractors would come out to do a pre-inspection that's conducted to determine the square feet of the grass area that's going to be removed, along with any other non-grass areas such as shrubs, planter beds, anything that uh, the customer would wish to remove. Now, the non-grass areas are non-rebatable, but many customers do choose to retrofit those areas to have a complete native garden. Uh, and then the customer uh, meets with our landscape design con con uh, consultant to lay out a plan for their future garden. Uh, MNWD actually covers half the cost of this design consultation. Uh, then the work begins. Our contractors remove and dispose of all agreed upon areas and replace it with a young California with young California native plants. And about 90 days later, a post inspection is performed to check on the garden and answer any questions the customers may have. Um, it's really become one of our more popular programs in recent years, and we even host a native uh, garden tour each year to highlight the homes that have made the transformation, and that's been uh, really, really well received as well. Uh, that is it for that one. So uh, next slide, please. And the final program I'll speak with you today is uh, it's called Cowscape. Now this program was created because we found it hard to find any native plants in nurseries throughout the region, and if they are, and if they do have native plants available, there's nothing really showing a customer which plants are native that have evolved 
perspective that have evolved to the natural hydrology of our area. So we've teamed up with the Metropolitan Water District, California Native Plant Society, Tree of Life Nursery, and roughly 20 other local water districts to promote our California native plants at local nurseries and even big box stores like Home Depot. Um, and through this joint effort, we have cre we've created training modules for the nurseries, which Tree of Life Nursery and California Native Plant Society handle that educational process. Also, we've uh, created a new branding, as you can see on this slide here, uh, that, that will be available, that will be on all California native plants and sections at these nurseries to make them more easily identifiable for the customers when they're there. Uh, this program is still in the early stages and, and will evolve with time, but we've already been receiving great positive feedback from the nurseries and their employees, so we're really excited about that. And uh, that concludes our portion of the webinar, and thank you all for the opportunity to speak to you uh, about some of our programs. We look forward to hearing what everyone else has going on. Thank you. Hello, everyone. This is Kevin with Rainmaster. For over 20 years, we've been helping customers keep yards green and their business open in the wintertime by removing their snow. Uh, our company goal is to have customers that are uh, what we call promoters, meaning they'll promote our business. You'd see this uh, evident in our, in our Google reviews. Um, and we do this by focusing on two things. One, everyone that uh, that's on our team is year-round. This is a career um, where they go through training and education. Um, it's not a summer job. And number two, we focus on water efficiency and soil health. Uh, next slide, please. So we know a healthy lawn comes um, from healthy soil and proper maintenance techniques. That is why each and every one of our lawn health care programs includes organic material and uh, testing of the, the soil pH. We're not just focusing on uh, what a lot of people are focusing on, the NPK. So we are doing free pH tests on all of our lawn healthcare programs, and we're monitoring that throughout the season and adjusting accordingly. Uh, next slide, please. Educating our customers on proper techniques, um, on proper maintenance technique, techniques and plant selection is crucial, uh, and it takes constant education from our entire team. Watering uh, is one of those things that is constantly needing uh, reminders and education as the weather is changing and the landscape change uh, every day and seasonally. So we've been able to use Ratio um, in multiple scenarios here where they've helped us overcome some of those watering challenges. Things like adjusting, adjusting the watering days and durations with the weather, adjusting the watering durations for specific plants and soil types and keeping watering times close to uh, the sunrise. Just by using these few things with Raggio, we've seen uh, huge water savings for our customers. That completes my slides. Hi, this is Chris with Raggio. Um, thanks for letting me speak today. Um, so we are our mission-driven company, and our mission is uh, to make sustainable water use effortless and, and personally rewarding. Uh, we really find our, our point of innovation is that that, that tension point between sustainability and, and a delightful experience for, for our customers. Um, today, we bring that um, to our customers through an ecosystem that includes smart watering technology. Um, you've heard a little bit about already, so I won't spend a ton of time on that. Um, a new product uh, called Ratio Thrive that we'll, we'll touch on in a minute. And then um, an engaging app experience where we can educate the customer um, and professionals and you know, help uh, really bring a, a sustainable watering practice um, to the home that is, that is comprehensible to the, the homeowner. Um, next slide, please. So I'll talk a little bit about uh, Thrive. Um, this is our first product in the Thrive product family and it's a, it's a soil amendment. And we really came to the conclusion on, on this product line as we explored our, our customer needs and we found that a large majority of our customers um, do fertilize throughout the, the year. Um, you know, some use different types of synthetic MPKs uh, and it was something they were asking us for, for help with. Um, we explored a number of different solutions and ways that we could, we could help them, but we chose the uh, soil amendment path. Um, so Thrive is a, a microalgae product and uh, the ecosystem 
is designed to improve um, drought tolerance and uh, decreased water usage for, for the lawn. Um, within the Thrive Microalgae product, the soil amendment, uh, there's only uh, trace amounts of NPK. Um, and one of the problems we were really trying to solve was reduced uh, dissolved solids running off um, or leaching uh, from the soils. And um, again, we do, uh, similar to everyone here, focus on um, soil health. And by you know, increasing the, the organic um, matter and also uh, feeding the, the microbiome and providing a lot of diversity there in both bacteria and fungi, uh, we're able to increase root and shoot, uh, and shoot growth in the plant, um, expand the uh, mycorrhizae fungi um, symbiotic relationship with uh, the root of the plant where it actually inoculates the roots of the grass um, and allows that that plant to, if you will, reach further to mobilize nutrients. Um, and then again, with, with that microbiome assist, uh, really allows the, the grass to thrive even in, in high temperatures and, and at reduced watering. Um, with the uh, improved microaggregation or um, you know structure of the soil, we also improve soil water holding capacity. And we'll talk about here in a minute, that's, that's sort of weaved into our um, watering algorithm that we continue to build upon. Uh, and you know, one of the things that we're really trying to do is uh, encourage regenerative practices, um, like helping the customer understand when uh, to change the the height of their grass and how to mow and you know replenish some of that nitrogen source uh, with uh, the plant itself. Next slide, please. So, um, as as already kind of discussed previously, we're we're doing a number of different types of uh, water conservation initiatives with different utilities. Um, as diverse as, uh, you know, through water um, savings, reducing the need to tap uh, or um, leverage wells that have lower water quality um, to, you know, working with, pro working with utilities and running different programs where we're able to distribute a large number of, of water savings controllers um, that are, you know, used and um, have the ability to be audited. Uh, I can, uh, you know, I don't know if Sarah or, or Daniel want to jump in at all on and talk to any one of these specifically. Um, otherwise, I, I will move on. Um, I just wanted to just point out the, the programs. Yeah, I think what I this is Sarah. What I would say um, really is, like Chris said, we have able we've been able to partner with a variety of utilities to solve um, various you know challenges or, or opportunities they've seen whether around conservation water quality and we're, we're very much looking forward to and in discussions around how can Thrive uh, potentially be layered into the mix to see even greater um, savings or improve, improved uh, water quality initiatives. So we're going to continue to look to our uh, great partners across the country to continue that dialogue and to continue to drive towards our mission and meet, meeting their uh, requirements. Thanks, Sarah. Next slide, please. And then finally, um, you know, this paints a little bit of a picture for you of um, how we see, you know, our, our first version of our, our new watering algorithm that does take into account changing soil structure, um, really saving, you know, three to four skips um, or three to four waterings in the, in the first year uh, with projections of nine to 11 um, in the following year. And we will obviously continue to refine this and use it with our different watering um, we, have, we have a number of different schedule types, but the, you know, the philosophy here is that we're um, improving water holding capacity. Uh, we are improving um, root growth through some of our um, MAD scheduling or, uh, that are wrapped into our flex scheduling and um, you know, really seeing a, a healthy plant that is becoming more and more drought resistant and able to go longer and longer without water. Thank you very much. All right, thanks a lot to all of our speakers today. Uh, before we get into the Q&A, we will just pop up a couple more quick poll questions. Um, and then after the poll questions, we'll take some questions from our speakers. And once we take finish with those questions, um, we'll have a few more slides just to close out the session and then one last poll on future webinar topics. So Liam, if you could go ahead and uh, bring up the next poll question. Uh, we'd like to know what type of landscapes are you working with if you're working in landscaping? Is it residential, 
commercial, or do you typically handle both? Okay, and if we can show the results. So it looks like the vast majority of you are working with um, both types of land, and then also about 30% are just working on residential. So thanks for that. And our other poll question, Do you need a way to note your attendance for this webinar? If so, we can send an email to attendees who join both the webinar or the phone call portions of the webinar for at least 30 minutes. And I know we're um, right at about 30 minutes into the webinar, so that'll include some of the Q&A time for you. Um, please note that only attendees that were signed into the webinar platform itself will receive proof of attendance. Thanks a lot. Uh, so, Liam, uh, do you have any questions for our panelists? Thanks, Julius. Yep, we have a couple questions that have come in. Um, first couple are for Molten Miguel. Uh, are you also using the flow sensor component of Rock Geo controllers? This is this is Drew. Um, we, we we haven't done any programs with them. We've been looking at them. I know some other utilities um, have been doing some uh, research research on them. Um, the our concern today has been more on it, putting putting things into the plumbing on the customer side. But I I mean I think they're great. We encourage customers to to look at them because they do um, provide a wealth of information on the on the customer side. Um, but we we don't have any water efficiency programs um, for them. Okay, and another point of clarification for you. Uh, did you say the utility hires a contractor for the major state program? Correct. Yeah, the, so the the program we we did an RFP uh, pr to to select uh, uh, the vendor for the. Uh, direct install program and it's uh, it's a tree of life which is a, a local um, actually they're, they're a great resource but they're a local uh, California native plant um, uh, nursery um, that's that's just a couple miles from our service area all right thank you uh, so question for Raccio does Raccio thrive replace routine fertilization and weed control treatments or is it more like if the soil microbiome is improved those treatments would not be needed i can start this and i'll let sarah chime in as well um I, we so we are starting to take some uh, plant tissue uh tests to understand you know um the available nutrients that are already in the soil um that the uh you know, obviously, the enhanced microbiome can can bring to the plant. Um, we have found that this this can be a substitute for um, NPK. Now we don't know if uh, NPK will um, you know need to be supplemented uh, maybe on a more infrequent basis, but we absolutely know that this will reduce the overall need or reliance on an NPK. And then from a weed standpoint, um, no, this is not the, the microalgae itself is is not a um, prevention against against weed um, you know we we uh, subscribe to the philosophy that a, um, a healthy lawn is is the best way to kind of um, you know uh, attack the weed problem all right thank you uh, how can the ratio device be set for plants in Southern California that are expecting water in winter and just a little in the summer Um, I, I can feel this one too, I suppose. Uh, so you're talking specifically of some of the California native plants and um, they're changing crop coefficients, uh, I'm guessing, in, in the summer and winter. Um, I guess you wouldn't be able to answer that because these are, these are questions coming in. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm just reading uh, what's written. 
Yeah, so um, these schedules do adjust uh, based on um, estimated evapotranspiration. Um, we do not have the, uh, I think, the notion of a, um, a dynamic crop coefficient at this time, um, but there are things that we are looking at. Yeah, and just this is Sarah, just to build on that, we've had discussions too. We're, we're looking at California native plants, um, specific settings too. So to Chris's point, the dynamic crop coefficient will be important and is, and is being looked at as well as kind of California native plants specifically or other native plants as we as we look to our longer term roadmap. All right, thank you. Have you used uh, have you used Thrive on sports field? If so, how does it affect the turf performance? We, we have not. We're, we're very much focused on the residential space. Okay. Yeah, I, one thing I would say, Chris, feel free to build, is that um, the product, not through us, but others, the product has been used on golf courses successfully. That's correct. We, we don't manufacture the product, we source it. All right, looks like uh, possibly going back to Molten Miguel uh, with, with the Naturescape program, replacing turf with native plants. Is the soil amended in a uh, in way to better support native plants? Um, the great thing about uh, the Naturescape program and just the native plants in general is that it's it's designed for the local local soil and local. Um, I mean, I know that we, that we do some site prep depending on, I mean, if, if there's um, too much fertilizer and stuff, but they get, they get, they get the site prep and mostly it's, it's using the, the native soils uh, for, for native plants. So it's, there's not as much involved in terms of um, needing to, to augment with other, other um, topsoil added. Okay. Uh, next question, uh, we, we've been discussing how to partner with nurseries on native landscape outreach, so I'd like to hear a bit more about Moulton Miguel's experience working with nurseries, what it took, how long it took to develop the campaign, what you asked of the nurseries, et cetera. No, that's a that's a great great program, um, and it was a good question. The I just I would thank our water efficiency team for working really really collaboratively across the region. It's it's a discussion point in some of our local water efficiency meetings, and our team really took initiative, um, led by our uh, water efficiency manager Lindsay Stubick. Um, they they um, did a lot of research, um, talked to a lot of people. We also had a um, from uh, Water Now. They did a they have their um, um, accelerator type of award that helps provide time and so we we um, we worked with them and they helped provide some time to help support research on this but um, a lot of it was staff staff led to to do a lot of interviews working with the nurseries um, starting the naturescape program itself um, had us learn a lot about um, native plants and um, had the had staff really um, engage in understanding the the gaps that were out there, um, and so we have a very kind of data driven type of approach. So we started identifying the gaps and seeing that we needed to do surveys that we uh, need, and we work a lot of, uh, collaboratively at Molten with our outreach and our marketing groups, and saw that there was um, gaps there in terms of customer understanding, and so um, it was really um, driven by um, a wealth of um, experience and knowledge um, built over over the years by the, uh, the team and understanding what what needs to happen and working collaboratively across a number of uh, utilities to because this isn't this isn't a molten Miguel issue it's a statewide issue for branding and so uh, working we, we talked a lot with the California Native Plant Society with that statewide presence which was enormously helpful um, and and talking to local chapters, talk, and that helps um, overall provide um, just a, a wealth of uh, information. And it's still it's still ongoing. We're looking to launch uh, this fall. Um, we've been building relationships with nurseries to uh, to get them certified, to understand, and go through the training for the program um, to get the point of sale uh, marketing materials. Um, but it, it'll, it'll be an ongoing partnership uh, that we. We'll look to continue to build and work with uh, both utilities, nurseries, and 
um, um, lo local groups and statewide uh, non compliment organizations uh, like like California Plant Society. All right, great, thank you. Uh, another one for you. Uh, how many smart timers have been directly installed? What is the total cost to your utility for the timer and the pro installs? Great question. I I I'll go by memory. So um, which yeah. So well, so the my recollection is that we've installed um, and, and working with uh, ratio we've seen the total number of ratios installed in our service area which i believe is around 3000 um, we have 47500 uh, single family residential customers um, about two thirds of those are single family detached houses um, and so we have actually i think we have probably we're either one of the or the highest density of um, smart timers and ratio smart timers in California. And obviously California is one of the biggest markets for smart timers in the US, if not the, the world. And so um, we have a really high participation rate. And, and the, the reason why we keep focusing on it is that it is by far the most effective um, outdoor program. Um, and one story point is all of our marketing over the last um, four, four years, we've actually shifted to have more people to participate in outdoor programs than indoor programs uh, for the first time. So that's been a huge um, accomplishment. Um, and the, the, uh, the cost of the program varies depending on how many smart timers customers want and um, if they need an outdoor enclosure and so we can if, if if i can give my contact info we can i can get all the materials from the, the rfp but i would just say that the the program itself like the the like what really matters uh, to us as an agency looking at the the public benefit is the avoided cost and the the payback um, looking at the cost of imported water um, and the cost of uh, payback for these programs is like a couple of years um, at, at most um, because of how how much water they were saving because uh, we're focused on uh, marketing to the largest uh, users. Um, so having those large uh, landscapes convert to uh, align their watering with uh, the, uh, the, the what plant needs really saved a, a, ton of, a ton of water and we've seen that in the, in the data. Um, so it's been a really, really successful, but I, I'll just encourage if anyone wants to reach out to me, my email is uh, d at water, d uh, a T W A T E R at M N W D dot com, and we're happy to provide any of the the materials for these programs. All right, thanks, Drew. Uh, jumping back to Rachio, has there been any university research done on Thrive? Just curious as to what is in it. If there, excuse me, has been any has been research done regarding the benefits in various types of soils? There has been, um, it's been mostly prime, uh, focused in the, the ag space and we are starting to run um, some more research uh, on our own end in uh, the, the lawn and turf space. Um, but from a scientific standpoint, it, it, it still applies to, um, you know, grasses, it does to other types of plants. Um, so the company that uh, manufactures the product um, has done research with um, universities uh, and third parties on the efficacy of the microalgae and uh, also in conjunction with um, fertility plans um, but more more focused on the ag space and uh, they are actually currently I believe moving some of their research to I don't know if it's Arizona State um, or the University of Arizona I'm not sure which campus um, to have a lot more uh, university participation Hey, Julius, do we uh, want to move on to the last couple slides here? Do we have time for one more question? Yeah, sure. I think we've got time for just one more, and then we'll close out. I think there's about five more slides to close out. Okay, so uh, one more for Rachio. Uh, would you speak to using the integrated water meter for the sprinkler system looking at flow rate abnormalities? Yeah, so I'm just trying to think of what this means. Um, so I'm guessing 
it is looking at the the water meter um, to maybe identify leaks or um, improper or irregular water usage, I guess, for a specific zone. Um, so our in pipe flow meter can can absolutely um, do that, and we have some calibration that's already in the app itself, where it, it calibrates the the uh, the flow rate. Um, and it can measure if there is flow that's happening outside of a normal zone run, um, or if the flow rate itself is different than what is expected within a, you know a normal zone run. Um, and then there's a notification to uh, the user that there is um, you know irregular water use. I think that might answer the question, but uh, that that's sort of how it works. All right, thanks a lot to all of our speakers and thanks for answering all of those questions. Um, if we had any more questions come in or if we didn't get to them, I believe we'll be um, sending them around to our speakers right after the call just to uh, provide some final answers to those. Um, so yeah, if you still have any other questions, just send them in and we'll be collecting them. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and close out our session with the last couple of slides. So some of you may already be WaterSense partners, but we might be new to others. Our program depends on our partners to carry the message of water efficiency to businesses and consumers. Many of the utility and government organizations on the call today fall into our promotional partner category, but we have several other partner types, including manufacturers, retailers, distributors, builders, certification providers, and professional certifying organizations. I want to encourage you to become a WaterSense partner. After all, it's free. You will gain access to tons of outreach materials to help communicate the importance of water efficiency and promote WaterSense labeled products. Next slide. If you're an irrigation professional, consider one of our WaterSense labeled certification programs. These programs offer certification in irrigation system design, installation and maintenance, and irrigation system auditing. Currently, over 2,800 professionals have been certified by WaterSense labeled programs across the country. These certified irrigation professionals are listed in our directory of certified professionals on the WaterSense website. And if you are a property manager looking to improve your landscape, you can use the directory of certified professionals to search for an irrigation contractor in your area. Next slide. And finally, our last poll question. Hopefully you're finding these webinars to be beneficial. We'd like your input on potential topics for future webinars. What webinar topics are you interested in for the future? We have industry-focused water budget budgeting, benefits of native plants in the landscape, irrigation certification program case studies, plant responsive drip irrigation, and soil amendments and plant health. If you're interested in a webinar topic that's not listed here, please feel free to type that topic into the chat box. All right, I think that's about it. And so it looks like our Topics are mostly focusing on industry-focused water budgeting, um, and then we've got 24% for plant-responsive drip irrigation. Um, after that, we've got some interest in native plants in the landscape, followed by a tie between certification program case studies and soil amendments and plant health. So look forward to some of those in the future. Thanks everyone for attending today's webinar. I would also like to thank our speakers, Marianne Dickinson, Drew Atwater, John Lansden, Kevin Buck, Chris Klein, and Sarah Heitzman. Everyone have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.